Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, free site, bettingangle.us, free site. I'm making this video without my usual, remember, the opinion you should follow prologue, really just to respond to those of you who have left comments in the comment section of prior videos asking for my opinion on today's light heavyweight title fight the rematch between Elidor Alvarez and Sergei Kovalev. Right? Let me just say this fight is a must watch for the boxing hardcore. Right? If you're interested in the light heavyweight division, if you realize that a lot's going on there, right? Adonis Stevenson right now is trying to get his life back together. He's lost his title to Grosdick, right? You have Bivol, a champion who might be dominant. And you have these two guys, both in their 30s, hoping to stay relevant, right? Then today's fight is one you have to see. Let's just quickly touch on styles, then I'll get into the odds on the fight. You know, Kovalev, widely viewed as a slugger, is actually a guy who, to me, has one of the best jabs in boxing. Right? That jab is really a power punch. If you see a Kovalev fight where he can land that jab with regularity, he's going to batter you to death. Right? Think Carlos Monzon. Think Larry Holmes. Right? Kovalev's jab really is, again, one of boxing's best jabs. The problem is he's fighting a mobile technician. Alvarez is a guy who won't stay around the pocket to get hit by the jab. Let me say, too, that Kovalev has a timing problem if he can't land the jab. A lot of his game falls apart. The blueprint on how to beat Kovalev can be found in Andre Ward's rematch against Kovalev. Right? You'll notice in that fight Ward is moving a lot and Ward is coming in at side angles. Right? It's a shame that that fight was marred by low blows because but for the low blows it's a masterpiece fight by Andre Ward right Ward is always out of range for Kovalev's jab let me also say too Kovalev's punch resistance at this stage of his career and he's mid thirties has to be openly questioned right he's finished completely finished at the end of the Ward fight. Well, here against Alvarez, the first time they fought, understand, Kovalev's best rounds are the rounds, the three rounds before Kovalev gets dropped. And once he's dropped, the fight is over. He's finished. Referee does him a favor. He could have been really badly hurt. He couldn't continue. Right? He was that beaten up. Understand the first few rounds, he can't land the jab at all. Then he starts to get the timing a little bit. So he starts to open up his game a little bit. But once he gets hit, he's finished. Right? Alvarez then knows how to hit him with regularity. Let's talk about the odds on the fight. Kovalev is a plus 140. Alvarez is a minus 175. In other words, Kovalev, you're getting pretty good odds. My advice to you is to watch the fight, but to not bet on the fight. I just don't have a good feeling about the fight, in part because I don't have a good feeling about Kovalev. Understand, Kovalev has always been a bully. 
right? He's always been the guy who comes in the ring, sneers at you, has a bad attitude, right? Batters you with the jab, then starts throwing power shots, hits hard, has never been defensively blessed, right? Has been dropped in some fights, barely beats Darnell Boone. Right? I believe it's Blake Caparello who drops him. He's never been defensively blessed. But he's always been that bully who, if he hits you with that 2 by 4 jab, then is able to come in with hooks. You were finished. Right? Finished. Well, now the bully's been exposed. Right? People know. If I can move a little bit, avoid the jab, this guy doesn't have the defense to stop me from lunging in at angles and leading with power shots. Right? I believe psychologically it's thrown Kovalev, who in my opinion has interpersonal problems, for a loop. I don't think Kovalev knows how to beat Beta. If he is an alpha, his whole construct falls apart. Right? If you don't buy into his superiority, if you know, as Alvarez knows, you can actually beat him by stoppage, then I'm not sure if Kovalev has the confidence. Forget the talent. I'm not sure if Kovalev has the confidence to beat people. Let me also say, too, that I am one of those people who tries to look at a person's psychological makeup before deciding on whether I'm going to bet on them. Right? I'm someone who didn't know Kovalev before. I picked Kovalev in the first Ward fight. Hell, I picked Kovalev in both fights. I thought Kovalev won that first Ward fight, quite frankly. But I'll say this, even in the first Ward fight, Kovalev starts fast. Knocks Andre down early. Looks good. Now Andre Ward is mentally tough. Right? So Ward, who's losing the fight badly, hangs in there. Isn't discouraged. Right? Ward's from Oakland. He's not going to be bullied. Ward wins many of the later rounds. No, I didn't think he came all the way back. The judges did. Right? The judges did. But just understand, Kovalev faded in that fight. Well, you get to the second fight, which was close before the last round. But understand, once Ward badly hurts Kovalev with the best punch of the fight, right? And it's not a body shot, folks. It's a shot up top. Almost takes Kovalev's head off. Kovalev is finished. Didn't have survival skills. Right? Bullies are so accustomed to bullying you that they don't know how to clinch you when they're hurt. Couldn't find Ward. Because Ward's a future Boxing Hall of Famer, Ward is coming in at angles. Ward's over here throwing body shots. He's not in front where Kovalev could land a jab, get his confidence, and then open up. Well, let's dig into Kovalev's psychological makeup. There are people in boxing... Right, Ali, uh, who once showed up to a press conference with a woman who was not his wife, right, then proceeded to win the fight. Right, Manny Pacquiao. You hear a lot about Pacquiao behind the scenes, right? One minute Pacquiao is supposed to have infidelity problems, then Pacquiao has a whole full blown career outside the ring, right? He's a congressman in the Philippines and stuff like that. You know Pacquiao, like Sugar Ray Robinson, runs with an entourage, right? So it's Team Pacquiao, right? You imagine Manny Pacquiao is the kind of guy who when he's in a hotel, he's taking up part of the floor, right? Several of the rooms next to his are for people in his entourage, right? You hear about Manny Pacquiao and possible financial problems, possible tax problems, and somehow in the ring, Manny Pacquiao is always Manny Pacquiao. Even when he loses, you don't get the feeling that the loss was because of problems outside the ring. You look at Manny's relationships, 
they're actually long-term relationships. He's with Bob Arum forever, right? I understand he's changed to Al Heyman now. He's with Freddie Roach for a very long time. They have a dust-up, both type A personalities, but afterwards, Pacquiao's the kind of guy who says, you know what, I want to get back with Freddie. In other words, you know, these long-term relationships, the guys end up back together. Right? Angelo Dundee once was in the other corner in an Ali fight. He was with Jimmy Ellis because Ali refused to pay Dundee top dollar. After that fight, of course, the two guys got back together. Michael Jordan, he's in casinos, he's smoking cigars, he's gambling, they claim he's a womanizer, right? Uh, he gets divorced. On the court, Michael Jordan, always a killer. Always a killer. Kovalev's different. I believe Kovalev's falling apart outside the ring. I think the stories are troubling. I'm troubled. I'm troubled by Kovalev's latest legal problems. I want people to Google it. Right? For legal reasons, because things are still being investigated, I'm not going to get into detail here, but the story's out there. I'm also troubled by how Kovalev's relationships unravel. He's with John David Jackson. Understand, John David Jackson, excellent trainer. Right? Most in the sport would be lucky to have John David Jackson in their corner. Right? Jackson himself, a former champion, a great fighter, you know, has trained other guys in big matches. Now, what's interesting is John David Jackson and Don Turner stood by Kovalev when others accused Kovalev of racism. Right? People like Jean Pascal accused Kovalev of racism. And Kovalev's corner, African Americans, had his back. Had his back. Now, what amazes me with Kovalev is Kovalev Let's just say, when things go south, they go south big time. Right? He had some less than exemplary things to say about John David Jackson when they broke up. John David Jackson had some less than complimentary things to say about Kovalev. Right? Now, I'm not here accusing Kovalev of racism. Buddy McGirt, his current trainer, is African American. Right? But what I am saying here is just like if you're on a date and you find out that the person you're dating has been divorced oh five or six times right you see press clippings where the person you're dating has had legal problems involving serious allegations and where the person you're dating seems to show a certain lack of class in talking about things that have happened to them in their lives as well as other opponents. I believe the red flags would come out. You would say to yourself, you know what, this person doesn't handle stress well. Now, if the person you're dating happens to be a professional boxer and you notice how helpless the person looked, that's the word, helpless, that last round of the second ward fight, and again, that may have ended his career. Then you notice how helpless the guy looked in the last round of the first Alvarez fight. Folks, he's done. The punch resistance is gone. Right? When you start asking yourself hard questions like, wow, is this guy even a real 175 pounder? How could a guy have that bad punch resistance? Right? I'm just telling you that sometimes these guys lose weight to make weight. But they've weight drained their body so much that their body can't take a punch. You notice it when the guy is in his mid-30s like Kovalev is. In your 20s, guys can lose 10 pounds, show up, step on the scale, make the weigh in. Their bodies can then rehydrate. That's the word we always use in boxing, right? Rehydrate get back to its natural weight in 24 hours 
And of course, in your 20s, your body's younger, it's more resilient. The guy can then be in fights, get hit, and still be himself. I don't believe that's the case with Kovalev. I think this is a guy changing trainers in part because he's not a gym rat. He's not a guy who trainers look at and then they think, you know what, this guy is committed. This guy makes weight comfortably. This guy's physically fit. I look at a trainer like Abel Sanchez, one of the best trainers in boxing, Golovkin's trainer, right? Sanchez has also been in other corners for several other fighters, right? Sanchez, of course, runs a gym out of Big Bear. Then you find out that Kovalev was with Sanchez, and you understand Sanchez really does expect a fighter to be committed, a fighter to be self-motivated. Right? Sanchez isn't there to be anyone's parent. Right? He's your professional trainer. It's a professional relationship. He's going to do his job. He's expecting you to do your job. Folks, Kovalev couldn't cut it at Sanchez's gym. How's that possible with this jab? How's that possible with this punching power? You know Kovalev has world-class talent. How couldn't he cut it at Sanchez's gym? I think the reason he couldn't cut it is because this guy isn't as committed as some other fighters. Right? He's not Golovkin. I think this guy can't take a punch in part because he hasn't really developed his midsection. Right? Andre Ward's feasting on Kovalev's midsection. He hasn't really developed his midsection. And I believe mentally, and we have to make hard decisions here, I believe mentally Kovalev's fragile. Right? You know that by just the way he discusses past relationships. So, I'll say this, I look at the plus 140 and I'm like, wow, that would be tempting. That would be tempting if it were Bivol, Adonis Stevenson before the last fight. That'd be tempting if it were a hungry heavyweight who I thought was very driven, who had it all together. I don't believe Kovalev mentally does. I believe he's a guy with a bully persona who when faced with adversity, if he's not front-running you, if he doesn't get that early knockdown like he did the first Ward fight, or if he gets the early knockdown and you get up like Andre Ward, and you're still determined to beat him, I think Kovalev falls apart. Right? Alvarez, at a minimum, knows he can stop Kovalev because he already has. Right? So I don't want to lay a minus 175 on Alvarez because I think the fight's competitive. But I don't believe in Kovalev at this stage to take the plus 140. Let me also say too that the fact that Kovalev's winning rounds before the knockdown, you know, I'm afraid to even play with distance here. Because there is the possibility that Kovalev might have cracked Alvarez's code and might have figured out how to win rounds, win the slow rounds. Right? If Kovalev could figure out how to win the slow rounds, he has a shot at a decision. But my goodness, if Alvarez lands just one good shot, I don't trust Kovalev's fitness. I don't trust his punch resistance. This is a guy who might look in shape, who might actually be out of shape. Also, I really value continuity with fighters, especially after a tough fight. Kovalev got blown out by Alvarez before, right? The end of that fight's not pretty. Both guys knew who won that fight at the end, right? Anyone who blames the ref for the stoppage didn't look at the fight. 
right? Well, now Buddy McGirt, understand, Buddy McGirt has had some bad experiences with fighters. Let's just say, at the top end of business, you have things called non-disclosure agreements. You have guys who really won't open up and tell you what they really think about someone because they have assets they don't want to be sued. Let's just say I remember when Paulie Malignaggi, one of boxing's best analysts, had a big time problem with Buddy McGirt. Right? Understand, both guys, you know, New York boxing scene, Paulie joined up with Buddy McGirt Let's just say you need to Google what happened to that relationship. Right? Buddy McGirt has his own ideas on training fighters. Now, you mean to tell me this is a new trainer for Kovalev? Kovalev doesn't have the long term relationship with his trainer so that if things get rough and tumble again with Alvarez, right? Let's remember, Kovalev lost that first fight. You mean to tell me that he's going to go to the corner and he's going to be hearing from someone new? Folks, I don't like that. Right? You don't go to war, especially when the other army has already beaten you. You don't go to war with a new approach, with a new corner. One of the secrets to Canelo's success is he knows his corner. Right? He trusts them. When a fighter breaks up with his corner and then is fighting a guy who's already beaten them with a new corner, a trainer who hasn't gotten along with some high-profile fighters, guys like Pauli Malignaggi, right? To me, that gives me hesitation on taking what, at first glance, might look like a plus 140. So in gambling, you need to know when to say when. You need to be selective. You can't walk in the casino and bet on every event. I'm on the sidelines for this fight. Right, I'm making this video just to respond to those of you who want to know why I haven't made a video on this fight. It's because there's too much risk involved for this gambler. So in the comment section here, I'll tell you what, let's make this about your choices and your analysis. If you have gambling insight that you want to share here with the public, if you have your own boxing prediction website and you want to leave a link in the comment section to this video saying, hey, check out my take on Alvarez versus Kovalev for the championship at light heavyweight. Then accept my invitation and leave your comments in the comment section to this video. But let's just say Alvarez lost several of the rounds in that first fight. I thought Kovalev looked like he was starting to get control of the fight right when he got stopped. So I don't want to lay a minus 175. The odds matter. The possible payoff just isn't enough for me to take that risk. And with Kovalev, when I see a guy having out of the ring problems, when I see a guy who has lost some recent fights and has pl plunging punch resistance, when I see a guy who seems to be falling apart outside of the ring, that's not a guy who I'm rushing to bet on even at a plus 140, right? I don't believe Kovalev has the makeup of a Pacquiao or a Jordan who can kind of like tune out the noise outside the ring. This guy strikes me as a guy who, when he has trouble outside the ring, he's going to have trouble inside of the ring. And I think right now, outside of the ring, Kovalev's falling apart. I'm on the sidelines. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.